On today's episode, we will review Lone Star by Ed Ifkovic. Then we will announce our next book. Welcome. Hello, and welcome back to It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club. I'm your host, Ann Dark. She's back, Tracy Stormy. And Kathy Knight. I had a great vacation. It was nice listening to you on the podcast as I was traveling. Enforcing our family members to listen to our podcast. Yes, kicking and screaming, but (laughs) they listened. And hello to them out there because I threatened them if they didn't listen. We are going to review the book Lone Star by Ed Ifkovic. Ed is the author of eight Edna Ferber mysteries. He also writes the Rick Van Lam mystery series under the name Andrew, I guess it's Lan, L-A-N-H. He taught literature and creative writing at a community college in Connecticut for 30 years. After he retired, he began to write full-time. He's a longtime lover of mysteries and fondly remembers discovering Earl Stanley Gardner's Perry Mason series on a family bookshelf and his immediate obsession with the whodunit world. He was introduced to Edna Ferber's work at about age 14, and became immersed in her books, easy to do. His short stories and essays have appeared in The Village Voice, America, Hartford Monthly, and The Journal of Popular Culture. And a synopsis of the book is... In Hollywood, for the filming of her novel Giant, author Edna Ferber and her sidekick Mercedes McCambridge get involved in investigating the murder of a young actress said to be James Dean's mistress. All right, well, let's get started. Let's go through our cast of characters. First, we have Edna Ferber. In this story, she is 70 years old. She's the author of Giant, Showboat, and Cimarron. She's an ex-reporter, and she is the consummate amateur detective. James Dean. Do we really need to tell you who James <laughs> Dean is? But anyway, he was an iconic actor, one of the stars of Giant. He was 24 years old when they were filming Giant. He was handsome. He lived by his own rules, earning him the adoration <laughs> of most women and the loathing of most men. I would think some men were actually in love so with him, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rock Hudson is the handsome screen idol. Edna finds him wooden. He doesn't like James Dean, and Edna doesn't like him. Elizabeth Taylor. We all know Elizabeth Taylor. She's an actress. She's been a child star since the age of nine, and she gets along with everyone. Then we have Tansy Rowland. She's the daughter of Edna's best friend. She is Jack Warner's assistant and a Dean devotee. Henry Ginsburg is adapting Giant the novel into Giant the movie. He doesn't like James Dean either. Jack Warner is the head of the studio, all powerful. He will pay big money to keep the studio and its stars from tabloid scrutiny. Then we have Jake Geyser, Warner's troubleshooter, and he does not like James Dean. Mercedes McCambridge is an actress. She's a great friend and ally of Edna. Carissa Krauss. She's a bit part actress. She was fired from the set of Giant, and she currently lives on Skid Row. She tries to blackmail James Dean. She says she's pregnant with his child and will tell the tabloids all unless he marries her or pays her off. She's been sending letters to both James Dean and to Jack Warner. Lydia Plummer was a bit actress. She was in love with James Dean. 
She dated him, and she has a drug problem. Tommy Dwyer went to high school with James Dean. He copies his clothes, appearance, and tries to copy his style. He can't get more than bit parts in Hollywood, and he really wants to be James Dean. Polly Dunn is Tommy's girlfriend. She is also in love with James Dean. Nell Myers, she's a script girl, and she accuses Lydia of murder. Alice and Alva Strand, they're very interesting. They're 18-year-old twins. They are obsessive fans of James Dean and follow him everywhere. They hang around waiting for him to appear at all hours and all places. They're a bit nuts. Detective Xavier Cotton is the L.A. police detective who's head of the investigation into the murder, and he thinks James Dean is guilty. Max Cole is James Dean's best friend. He's a biker. He had a fight with Jimmy and ran from the police. He dated Carissa before Jimmy did. Josh McDowell introduced Carissa to James Dean. Manuel Vega is the superintendent of Carissa's apartment building. Connie (laughs) Zuinga is the 14-year-old granddaughter of Manuel Vega, and she is a huge James Dean fan. Okay, Kathy, what did you think? I was very impressed with how well Ed took real-life characters and wove a fictional story around actual events and did so in the voice of an elderly spinster novelist. I think that took a lot of talent. I agree. I'm a big fan of Edna Ferber's work. I prefer her books to the movies, but that's mostly my opinion. I remember when Giant came out. I was a younger version of myself back then, and I was a huge James Dean fan. I thought he was the most gorgeous man that God ever put on this planet. You have to realize we had no internet. We had no real TV back then. We had to get our information from Movie Star magazines, and there were Movie Star magazines out almost every day. There must have been a hundred, and they cost all of a quarter back then. We would just sit and cut all the pictures of James Dean out and stick them up on the wall. I remember how crushed I was. Well, I remember when he died. your sister, Aunt Jody. That's who I remember being the huge James Dean oh, fan. Oh, she adored James yes. Dean, and we always say. When we go someplace, there's always seems to be a picture of James Dean. We say, Jody's in there. She's slipping that picture in there. <laughs> she loved James Dean, too. He was just such a rebel. He was only in, I think, three movies before he died that he starred in. And this story goes into the relationship he had with Edna Ferber when she went out to cover the making of the movie Giant, which was based on one of her books. I don't know exactly how much of the relationship is in there. I don't know if Mr. Ifkovic got any insider information. As far it, as I can tell in my research... The way he portrays all of the relationships are pretty, are, are pretty accurate. Well, that's good. Back then, Rock Hudson was the movie star. All the women were swooning over him. Of course, this was long before his sexuality was even... Well, they were whispering about it back then. The tabloids would hint. That was the big fear back then, that the tabloids would get a hold of a picture or... An, some information and they would run with it and they could destroy a star's reputation and his career just by two words in an article or a picture that was inappropriate. Edna Ferber went out there to oversee the movie that her story was based on and of course James Dean was one of the stars of that movie and when she arrives she finds out that He's being blackmailed. And I'm sure that that probably really happened back then. It's believable. 
It certainly is, because... Not knowing anything about Edna Ferber and not knowing anything about the 1950s, since I was born in the 60s, I felt that I was taken there and got to experience part of old Hollywood. And it was very interesting. It's not the Hollywood we have today. Mm -mm. And um, I think with social media being able to know everything that happens at every minute of every day, I kind of liked the old Hollywood. And even though there was a very seedy side to it, it has a flavor to it. And I would have liked to have been around for back then and experience it myself. <laughs> well, we got to experience it back then through magazine. That was our experience. And the movies, I mean, you... Oh, yes. The movies you knew were not true to life. Back then, we did have a newsreel at the beginning of every movie. And it would show these glamorous premieres that these movie stars would go to. Just seemed like this fairy tale world that you wanted to be part of. See, I disagree. I think that a lot of people did think it was real life, and that's how people, they wanted to be movie stars because they thought that they all lived this way and they needed to be a movie star or meet a movie star so they could marry one. Or And when they'd see them up on the big screen, they want to be part of it. That was what they aspired to be. And yeah. it seemed like the studios would pretty much determine what the tabloids were putting out so that even well, though it was a tabloid it might not necessarily have been true to life. That's very true but the studios lived in fear of the tabloids. Oh I'm sure they did. Because sure. they could take a star like Rock Hudson if it had come out that he was gay back then. There time was no tolerance it was, for that. It was almost illegal then he would have been ruined. That's why he got married to a woman and had a sham marriage. So that would cover up. Same thing with Liberace. A lot of the stars back then and the studio wrote word for word what they were to say and what they were to do and who they could be seen with and the one that we knew of back then opposite of that was James Dean. He came along and he wasn't going to do what the studio wanted him to do. Yeah, but he died because of it. So. <laughs> right. well, but that uh, kind of led to the legend, too, that made oh, him... Yes. A lot of stars end up being a lot more popular after they die than... And he certainly did. He became... Well, he was so young that... Yeah. But let's get to the book itself, because okay. there's a lot to go over here. And we have our questions that we ask ourselves about this book. And what did you think of Edna as the protagonist in this book, or the the solver of the, the murders? <laughs> I think that as Edna, she did a very good job solving the murder. She kind of got thrust into the role of doing so. She didn't necessarily start out wanting to solve murders, but she came to believe that James Dean was innocent, and she wanted to prove that. She didn't necessarily want to solve the murder. She just wanted to prove James Dean was innocent. Right, so she could protect her investment in this movie. Yeah, I, that's, I think that's what it started out to be. I think... I don't think she planned on caring about James. I just think she knew she had a project to finish. This was going to stop the project. She was a problem solver. But then a new dimension came in. She started caring about James and really believing in him. It changed things. She fought for him. Yes, she did. What did you think of his relationship with his group of friends? where he would have a party at his house. That was bizarre. And, and have all the... I wonder if that really happened. I imagine it must have, because why would you have a party and you spend all your time laying up on a balcony not even talking to anybody? Sometimes you wonder if that's for attention or you want people around 
Kathy made a comment today that she, if you say you don't, you don't want to be alone, you just want to be left, left alone. alone. Right. Well, and think... maybe that was him. Maybe he wanted to have people around if he needed them, but well, the book I don't also. Know.